Hi Conley Clan fam! Today I am going to give you a medical update on myself. Now, I have filmed this video once already and then kind of changed my mind about what I was going to do. So, I am going to fill you in on what I was thinking and what I'm thinking now and why I've changed my mind. As many of you guys know, I have a medical condition called BMPM, which is benign multicystic peritoneal mesothelioma. Basically, I have non-cancerous cancer at this point. If you have not seen my video where I actually talk in detail about what I've been diagnosed with, with, I will link that at the end of this video so you can go back and watch that um, so you can get more detail on what's going on. But I went in a, a couple weeks ago for a follow-up MRI. So it's been about two and a half years ago I was diagnosed um, and then three months ago I went in for an MRI and they it had grown a little bit and now I've just gone in a couple weeks ago to have um, an updated MRI and they found that the cyst that I have that was about three inches is now about three and a half inches so it is growing and um, it is pushing on my bladder so about I'd say 50% of days I can feel that pressure um, I can just I can feel it pushing um, like on my muscles or I don't I'm not exactly sure what it's pushing on I just know that I can feel it not all the time but about half the time here are my options when I went in I noticed that not only has that cyst gotten bigger but there is one near my bowels that has also doubled in size since I got my first scan so about two two and a half years ago that that one really worries me. Um, I mean, they all worry me, but um, the one near my bowels really worries me. So originally when I was in the office, he gave me three options. <clears throat> he said, I could do nothing and I could just keep coming back in every three months to get MRIs to see how they're changing um, and what's going on. I could go on the other end of the spectrum and I could um, go in for surgery, have them remove all of the disease and then give me something called high pec chemo. I believe that's what it's called. Apparently this high pec chemo stunts the growth so that way when they do come back they don't grow as fast. And with the research that I've done on this disease, they will come back. So a lot of times they say that they will remove that peritoneal lining. Um, the peritoneal lining just runs up your abdomen area and it covers your organs. And they say that a lot of times they'll remove that, but then the cysts just come back. So I have that option, or I could do the middle ground, and that is I could do targeted surgery where they just take out the disease or the cysts that have gotten large and um, down the road I may need surgery again to remove larger cysts but it's at this point would just be a targeted surgery um, where they do that and then I could choose chemo or no chemo. Now I'm going to be completely honest I would never in my life do chemo. Now I, uh, I understand that everybody has their own opinions um, and I'm just saying that for myself, uh, our family is very natural healthcare 
and I would never want to put that kind of toxin in my body. So even if I had cancerous cancer, I would never have chemo. But I am not opposed to doing a surgery. So at first, I decided that I was going in for surgery. They automatically scheduled me for it just in case I wanted to do it. They also scheduled me for a follow-up MRI. That way I could choose whichever option I wanted. And I had decided that I was going in for the surgery to have the targeted surgery done. So I um, had it scheduled for November 2nd. I've been preparing myself. I've been making up, making the doctor's appointments um, to go in for that. They were gonna remove my ovaries while they're in there because they are extremely cystic. Um, and so they were gonna take those out. I was, I set up a doctor's appointment to have um, the hormone replacement ready to go because it was going to just automatically throw me into menopause, which, you know, there's good and bad to that. <laughs> but after sitting down and talking to Sean about it, um, I ended up changing my mind because Sean and I have done a ton of research on natural health care options, especially associated with cancer. And so, <clears throat> I was just thinking that going in and having surgery would be the easier option to remove the, the larger cysts. Um, I wouldn't have to feel that pressure anymore, which doesn't feel great. Um, and then I could basically just kind of start over. But Sean made a good point because we do know a lot about um, natural options that I could try that could potentially just shrink the disease on its own. Now, BMPM is very rare. Um, I believe they say that there's only like 50 cases a year. I don't know if that's United States or if that's worldwide, but in any case, it's very rare. So they don't know a lot about it. They say that um, they have never really had it morph into cancer, like cancerous cancer, and so that normally it just stays this benign cancer. Um, but they, of course, would, if they take anything out, they're gonna test it just to make sure. I have changed my mind, and I have decided that I am going to first try to do what I know uh, could potentially make an impact and make a difference in um, taking those cysts away because I can always go in for surgery later. So if I decide in three months from now I want to have surgery, I can do that. So I am going to start with the natural health care items first, go in for a follow-up MRI, see if um, it has made any impact and then at that point I can make another decision. I have one scheduled for December. I think I am going to wait and maybe push that out a little bit, uh, maybe March or April, and then have an MRI done then and see, that will give me a chance to um, try the natural healthcare things, see if it makes an impact at all, and then um, once I go in for a follow-up MRI, it will have given it, you know, what, three or four months, um, maybe even five months to make a difference. And then I can see at that point if uh, they have grown, shrunk, or what has happened. Once I go in for my follow-up appointment in March or April, I will let you guys know how that looks because I'm really excited to see if what I know and what the research that we've done, if that makes an impact. I'm, I'm really excited and interested to find out if what I know works. One last thought that I really want to share with you guys is that, you know, making this decision, it's, it's definitely not an easy decision, but with that surgery, if I do decide to have that done at some point, you know, it really isn't an easy surgery. They are going to do a full incision. Um, there is, they were, talking about, you know, depending on what the um, cyst looks like or where it's placed um, that is near my bowels, they were talking about, um, you know, do I want a bag? Do I not want a bag? Which that is a really scary conversation because absolutely I do not want 
that, especially not at my age. And um, they're talking about if they do have to do some resection surgery that um, I could potentially be in the hospital for up to 10 days. That's a really long time when we have this large family and um, everything go that you know goes into having a large family. And so that really scares me. And I, there are just a lot of things that um, I feel like are unknowns. And I really think that mentally, I need to probably prepare a little bit more for that. Also, um, you know, there's something to be said for following your intuition. And I have just been having, ever since I decided I was going to have the surgery, I have been having just not very good feelings about it. So I've been extremely nervous, um, which there is something to that. I mean, everybody's going to be nervous going in for surgery, I would assume, but it was more than that. Like, I just have the, had this really super negative feeling all wrapped around going in for that surgery. And so I am a firm believer in following your gut feelings and listening to your intuition. So. I am going to wait for now and hopefully I can, um, the natural healthcare stuff works for this disease uh, because it is a little bit different than normal cancer. And I, I'm praying, you know, I'll take all your prayers and, and positive thinking, um, positive vibes our way. That way I can uh, deal with this in a natural healthcare way instead. And I don't have to go in for surgery because really going in for surgery is kind of a scary thought. Okay, let's see if we can find them. Isabella and Sean are out here somewhere. And Isabella is learning to ride a bike she said that she really wants to learn today that today is the day so let's see if we can find where she's at and see if she's doing it oh i spy them up the street let's see if she i think she's doing it she comes everybody Woo! Look at you go! You're doing it! Isn't Woo! Isn't that first day <laughs> That's okay. Good job, honey. It's gonna take Good some time to learn to balance. Two, three. Stinko. Yeah, I don't want to. Go easy! I'm not getting flat. Uh-oh. She's going a little fast. Yeah. <laughs> it has taken Isabella quite some time to learn to ride a bike. She has always been very, very, very afraid of getting hurt. So this is definitely a huge milestone for her. And <laughs> I'm super proud. She used to be really, really far behind in both speech and motor skills. Um, and so it took us a long time to get her caught up. And then she was just way too afraid. She was afraid to get hurt and didn't even want to get on a bike. Now, all the kids are riding their bikes to school and she doesn't want to be left out anymore. So she's finally learned how to ride a bike and she's doing so good. We're so proud of her. Did you ride a bike? Yay! You rode it I'm so proud of you. Was it hard or easy? Easy. Easy? Are you ready to ride to school yet? No. Not quite, but I guess what? I bet you by next week you'll be ready to ride to school. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, I bet you will. <laughs>